Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm a registered nurse and I specialize in do lactation right now. I've been a nurse for 25 years and we will talk a little bit more about breastfeeding now. Okay, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the correct latch. The reason that the latch is so important is because we don't want you to be too sore. You are going to get sore without the baby latching on correctly. And the other reason is that the baby won't get enough milk unless they're latched on deep enough to the breast and correctly. One thing that I want you to always remember is that baby is the movable object, not the breast. So first of all, to get a good latch, I want you to sit back in a comfortable position and then go ahead and bring baby right into the breast. What we're looking for is a good, deep, asymmetrical latch. What I want to see, if this is the nipple, I want to see that baby enters into the breast and scoops up and takes more on the bottom side than the top. So baby will enter with their chin first, scooping up and onto the breast. What we see with a latch like this is when baby pulls away, your nipple will look nice and rounded like it's supposed to look. But if baby is on incorrectly and they've taken more on the top than that bottom, your nipple will look kind of pinched like it has a stripe across the top of it or like a new tube of lipstick where it's high on top and slanted towards the bottom. That's not what we want to see. Definitely it should feel comfortable while you're breastfeeding. If it, if it hurts initially, it may be because of an improper latch initially but it should not hurt past a few sucks. And you'll definitely feel a pulling, tugging sensation, but you should not feel any pain. The next thing we're going to talk about is proper positioning. The reason that it's so good to know different positions is simply because if you are really sore, you'll want to know a different position to not continue to make that spot on your breast so sore. As well as baby, if baby is nursing in the cradle hold and the cradle hold on both sides and not getting enough milk, you'll want to switch positions and go into the football hold so that baby can pull more milk based on the position that they're at. The four different positions are the cradle hold is simply like this. Baby is cradled in between your arms, breastfeeding this way, and you've got this hand, this free hand to help with baby at the breast. The cross cradle hold, baby remains in the same position, but your hand position changes. Your hand position will change from this hold, and you, at this point, will have more control of your baby. So this is the cross cradle hold, and then you've got this free hand to help baby. In the football hold, you're basically tucking baby underneath your arm like a little football, and again, holding it with the same hand as where baby's facing and it will give you a lot of control. So the two positions that I recommend right now would be the cross cradle hold and the football hold. And the reason being is because you will have more control at this point. What you're looking for with both of these positions, either of these positions, is that the baby's ear, shoulder, and hip are in a nice straight line. That's what we want to see. You and I, as we take a drink of water, we are in a straight line as we take a drink of water. A couple of common things that happen is that we hold baby around the head and we put their head too tight into the breast. If you allow your hands to be more along the baby's back and shoulders here and just simply guide their head and have control, then you can pull baby's head away from the breast and baby's able to breathe that way. And then you're not having to compress the breast with your hands to make sure that baby can breathe. That's one thing that I want you to do. The other thing is from head to toe, also baby should be in a nice straight line. Another common thing to do is to put baby's head up here into the breast. And if you can see at this point how close baby's ear is to the shoulder, we don't want to see that. We want to make sure that baby is straight in a position and it makes it much easier for baby to swallow. A common question for new moms to ask is, is my baby getting enough milk? That's hard to know sometimes right at first. The colostrum that you're producing now may not seem like a lot, but it is excellent for your babies. So it's really important that you attempt at the breast often and allow baby to get all of the colostrum that you have. 
Here in the hospital, we'll be bringing by the yellow handout that will walk you day one through day seven. If you notice in your handout on day one, our goal is to get four to six good feedings in, in a, the first 24 hour period. Day two, what we're looking to get in, in a 24 hour period is six to eight feedings. I still want you to attempt every three hours at the breast. It's very important that you can at least attempt every three hours, but if you only get in that number of good solid feedings, that's okay. From day three on, you're looking to get in eight to 12 feedings in a 24 hour period. This is every two to three hours. And at night, if they're sleeping good for you, that's perfect. They can sleep once they're gaining weight. We could allow them to sleep a little bit longer at night, which might be four to five hours. But during the day, I would certainly wake them up a little bit to make sure that you get in eight to 12 feedings. Babies can cluster feed, so that's very normal as well. So make sure that you're getting in those eight to 12. Also on day one, it's mandatory that we have one wet and one poopy diaper. Day two, we wanna see two wet and two poopy diapers. Day three, we wanna see three wets and three poopies. It just keeps going up and up and up like this. And that's the way we can tell if enough's going in by what's coming out. So make sure that you're offering the breast often. Many times you'll hear swallows. The swallows on a baby sound very, very faint, and sometimes they're kind of hard to hear. But a little tiny motion, a little swallowing motion is what you're going to hear, a little swallowing sound is what you're going to hear. Many times as well, to make sure that baby gets enough, you can compress on your breast. All you would do for compression is to simply squeeze in the middle of the breast and express some of that colostrum down. The colostrum is super thick, it's like corn syrup or honey. So allowing yourself to compress and to push a little bit more will enable baby to get a few more swallows during that feeding. Now I told you that you're going to want to see a lot of wet and messy diapers. What's normal to see is the first few stools after birth is a thick tarry meconium. It looks kind of black and thick and tarry. It then moves into a transitional stool which is kind of a green, thicker stool as well into a perfectly normal breastfed stool, which is loose, yellow, seedy, mustardy. That's what we expect to see. Breast milk is so easily digested in the baby's belly that that's why it moves through so easy and simply, and that's why we see many loose stools. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how to prevent against sore and tender nipples. That's not fun for anyone. So what we need to do is first of all, make sure that the latch is correct. We talked about that initially, making sure that baby is very, very deep onto the breast. And one thing to mention as well is that you should see baby's lips completely flanged out. The lower lip should be tucked and touching the chin because they're so wide open with their mouth. So with sore and tender nipples, if you need to break the suction, we talked about how to do that and reposition and relatch baby. That's not a problem to do. Go ahead and do that or pull down on baby's chin and make sure that they're taking more in their mouth. Also for sore nipples, what you can do is change positions. We reviewed this a little bit earlier, but by changing positions, it will not allow the breast to become so sore in that one spot. Non-nutritive sucking is when a baby is up next to mom and is so comfortable next to mom that they kind of want to use you as a pacifier. We don't want this to happen. So when the baby's up to the breast, they should be sucking very good and very deep with this deep jaw movement up here with their lips flanged open really wide the whole time. And if they're not, if you feel like that strong suck has transitioned into a more, um, consistent loose suck, then what you want to do is pull your baby away from your breast. And once you pull them away from the breast, they will either start rooting around again, or as you stroke along their cheek here or down their lips, they'll start rooting. And if they start rooting at this point, then they want more food and you're able to put them back up to the breast and get them what they need. But if they are content and happy and done, and they're not rooting in any way, shape or form, then they would probably have been doing more non-nutritive sucking at the breast.
when you're getting engorged and the milk is coming in, sometimes the breast can be pretty uncomfortable and it also is hard for baby to latch on. It's like baby trying to latch on to an orange when they're so uncomfortable and full. So what we need to do is soften the nipple around that nipple, around the areola, so that baby is able to get a good deep latch. You can either pump for a few minutes. If you were to pump, it would soften around the areola, it would produce a letdown for baby, and it would allow baby to get that good deep latch. Also, you can hand express just simply by putting your fingers back where the areola is and hand expressing and compressing and squeezing some of that milk out there to make the nipple a little bit more soft. After a breastfeeding, I also want you to squeeze around the nipple and get some of your colostrum out. The colostrum and your own breast milk has a lot of fats in it and it is a very good healant and protectant. So if you were to squeeze a little bit out afterwards and let yourself air dry, the air drying will help to heal it from the inside out and it's a great way to heal sore nipples. The other thing that you can do after you have gotten some of your own colostrum or your breast milk out onto the nipple is use a little bit of the lanthanol cream. Your nurses can bring that pure lanolin cream into you and all you need is just a tiny little bit that you can rub right around the nipple after the feeding. That lanolin will help to prevent and heal against sore nipples as well. That is something that will work its way into the breast and you don't need to rub off before the next feeding. Now remember, if you're, you have nipples that are sore or cracked or bleeding, definitely contact one of us. We'd be happy to help you through that. That is something that we don't want to see for either your sake or the baby's. They're simply not gonna be able to get as much milk as they need to if you are that sore. So we are available every day. We'd be happy to come in and help you if we need to. The next thing that we're going to talk about is engorgement. Engorgement can happen as your milk is coming in. The milk usually comes in within day three to five. And after that, some people feel the difference with the milk coming in and can really tell that they're engorged because the milk becomes, the breast becomes full and tight and sore and others don't really notice a difference. But we need to talk about what to do if you are tight and full. The easiest way to treat engorgement is to use some warm packs, either a warm washcloth right on your nipple and areola. A very easy way actually is to jump in a warm shower. That warmth will open up all of the milk ducts and allow the milk to come down. Once you've done that, it's going to be easier for baby to latch on. If you needed to hand massage or hand express to get some of the milk out right at the end of the nipple, you can do that to allow baby an easier latch, as well as pumping. We talked a little bit about that before, but if you pump for just a few minutes beforehand, it's gonna soften it up around the areola, it's gonna bring your nipple out so it stands out and is a little bit easier for baby to latch, and it will produce a letdown. So the milk will be right there readily available for baby. So with engorgement, remember to use heat before and then afterwards we're gonna use cold packs. So ice packs right around the breast can be used and that ice will help with the swelling and the soreness. If you are also really sore, you may need to take a Tylenol or a Motrin and that could help with the swelling, the pain and relieve some of that engorgement as well. The other treatment for engorgement, it may sound kind of silly, but what it is, is cabbage leaves. All you do is buy a head of green cabbage at the store and it feels nice and cool because it should be refrigerated. What you do is you take the cabbage leaf, break the spine of the cabbage leaf, there's a component release through that, put it on your breast underneath your bra and that will help with engorgement. This is also how we tell people to dry up their milk supply as well. So you need to be cautious of that and know that you only want to put the cabbage leaf onto the breast three to four times a day for about 10 minutes and that will help to treat the engorgement. The last tip with engorgement that I want to remind you of is if baby is doing very, very well at the breast and sucking and latching well and you've heard lots and lots of swallows from the baby and if at this point baby pulls away naturally from the breast because they're done, they've had enough milk. This is perfect, that's exactly what we want to see. But if you at this point are still uncomfortable and your breasts still feel a little bit full, I want you to pump right after the feeding. If you pump right after the feeding, it's all within that same stimulation 
and then you're able to get your breast good and comfortable. I don't want you to pump until you're completely empty, but until you're good and comfortable, yes. If you were to wait a half an hour later and pump, then what we would be doing is stimulating the breast to produce more milk. So at this point, pump right after a feeding if you need to, and while baby's eating, make sure that you can massage and rub along their feet to keep baby good and awake. Three things, three ways that you can do it, rubbing their feet, rubbing in underneath their chin here, and then also in between their shoulder blades is a great way to keep baby sucking well at the breast. The next thing we're going to talk about is hand expression, and this is very helpful in relieving engorgement. What I want you to do is place your finger and thumb about one to one and a half inches behind the base of the nipple. I want you to gently lift and then push the breast back towards your chest while pressing your fingers together towards the nipple and releasing. And this is a rolling motion. Repeat this rolling motion several times until the milk begins to flow into the collection cup. I want you to continue working around your breast to reach all of the milk glands and then make sure that you repeat this on the other breast. Now we can talk about how to take care of you. I want to make sure that you are drinking lots and lots of fluids and this is going to help with your milk supply. I know that the nutritionist has already had a little bit of a clip on here about nutrition and the proper things to eat, but I want to make sure that you know that you can eat anything as long as you eat it in moderation. If you don't eat too much dairy in one day or too many hot spicy foods in one day, as long as everything's in moderation and balancing it out with a lot of water, then go ahead and eat anything you would like to. I want to cover a little bit about how to pump and store your milk. If you are engorged and making lots of milk, we talked a little bit about how pumping right after a feeding would be a great time to relieve some of that engorgement. If you want to store it, breast milk is good for five hours at room temperature and it's good for five days in the refrigerator. If at that point you're not going to use it, go ahead and put it either in um, a glass jelly jar or we have special freezer bags that you can buy downstairs in our lactation store or you can use a little Playtex nurser bag. Make sure that you double or triple tie those up because they're not freezer safe and then I would still stick them in a Ziploc freezer bag after that. They will store in the freezer for up to six months. So make sure that you're storing the breast milk towards the back of the freezer so it's not constantly being exposed to the air as you're opening that freezer. And then make sure that you label your milk and use the oldest milk first. Our number to the lactation store is on your yellow log that we bring you in at the hospital here. And the number's at the very bottom here. It's also up on the screen. If you need to consult with one of us, we are happy to do that. We work every day and twice a week we see patients from home. So if you needed to come in to be seen, we do charge a consultation fee. It's $35. We spend an hour, hour and a half, however long really, we need to spend with you to get the problem taken care of. What we do is we weigh baby first to make sure they're gaining weight appropriately at home and then we help with a good feeding and weigh baby afterwards so we can tell exactly how much they took in for that feeding. If needs be, we can talk about milk supply at that point if the baby hasn't taken in enough milk. So many things that we can do to help you. Um, a good thing with that is if you come in one time on an outpatient basis, you can then call as much as you need to and get as much help over the phone from one of us as you need to. Let us know here in the hospital if you would like to see us as well. Like I said, we're here every day and we want to make this as successful for you as you would like.